much shifts. A lot of events with many of the top players in the world, including uh, Roger and Serena. But the, the whole uh, value of Tim is that he's, he's, he brings to us a, a certain thing. It's called Edo Power Free. That's what I call it. And you can see what it's all about. But we have all have a graveyard of events, activities, programs that are great ideas that we've had and uh, that just never came to fruition. And the reason is that they weren't promoted with uh, the energy and excitement and enthusiasm that they should have been. So really excited to introduce uh, Tim. And you're going to get shaken up a little bit. We're going to go to lunch with a bit of a buzz. <laughs> That's for sure. Thank you, Greg. Appreciate it. Well, adaptability is the key, no doubt about it, because I had my laptop all fired up, ready to go, then we didn't get on the screen, then tried another laptop, no internet connection. Tried the third, so we'll see if this will roll. So we just gotta be uh, flexible, which is one of the uh, qualities that we need to have to be successful in business, right? So I am absolutely thrilled to be here. Again, thank you, Butch, and thank you for all of you um, for being here, and thank you for having me. So I'm excited, we are gonna have a broad brush view of promotions and I call it generating the three E's and I'm really really excited that I follow Chuck because <laughs> <laughs> after doing budgeting and I looked at the spreadsheet slides up there and I go oh my gosh I think those suicidal thoughts are coming back again I remember those budget meetings they were so exciting is that I go, so necessary or our businesses die, but I get to work in the toy department of life. Budgets, I wouldn't put exactly in my basket of toys, so I'm really glad that I get to do the fun stuff right before lunch. So we are gonna buzz through this very quickly. There's a lot to cover. What I'm gonna do is have broad brush umbrellas over many different sections, and so here's what our agenda is gonna be today. First, we're gonna talk about the power of promotion. And my personal belief is, is that everything is promotion. So we'll talk about that power and by creating energy behind your plan, whatever your plan may be, it may be your personal plan, it may be your business plan, whatever it might be, you need to empower the core, the immediate team around you. It may be your team at work, it could be your team as a family, it could be your circle of friends but you've got to empower the core. And then we're going to talk about generating excitement around your plan. How do we inspire the influencers? Chuck hit on it a little bit about talking about who are the influencers. I'll dig deeper in on that as well. And then igniting enthusiasm to propel your plan. How to move the masses. We're going to be marketing to the masses, but the bottom line is the masses, the people, the outer circle, the numbers, how do we move those? How do we propel that forward? So that's what we're gonna be doing today. And first, we'll talk about the power of promotion. The power of promotion brings the plan to life. You may have the greatest plan that has ever been the gift to processor. It may be awesome, it may be fantastic. It's the best thing ever devised in the history of business, but it's not gonna go anywhere unless you promote it. And it, you have to have the promotion behind the plan in order for it to work. And so promotion, I'm big on definitions. I like to go to the definition, one, because words mean things. There's definition, what do we mean by promotion? If I say the word promotion, it could be 50 different opinions of what promotion is. So here's our working definition, is the activity that supports or provides active encouragement in order to further that plan or venture or attack, uh, activity, cause, aim. And it's the publicization of the product organization or venture. So that's what promotion is, is publicizing, getting the word out essentially is what promotion is. And it incorporates sales, marketing, and commercial functions. The love of budgeting, as I talked about earlier. It's interesting, in my time at Wilson Sporting Goods, is I reported into each one of those divisions as U.S. Promotions Director for the Big W, I started as reporting into sales, and it made sense. The promotional activities, the Wilson Advisory staff, the demo events, that type of thing, it's to drive sales, so I reported into sales. Then I was moved over to marketing, and because it made sense, we're out promoting, we're out marketing the Wilson brand name and so many of the events, it makes sense to go into marketing. 
And then finally I, I promoted, then was moved over into commercial and promoted and into the commercial division. And by reporting into commercial, now yeah, we're beholden to the numbers. We have a big budget for promotion at Wilson. And so what we did is say, we're held to the numbers. What is the ROI that we're getting? So in the world of promotions, and think about, and just as kind of a broad brush of what I'm gonna to do today, is think about in your sphere of influence, where you reside, how do you apply what we're talking today into your business? How can you better promote? How can you better sell? How can you better market? And how can you better profit and get a greater ROI? So it's all those things, and here is the essence of promotion it is persuasion. That's what we do. When we're out promoting, we're out persuading, or at least attempting to do. If we're not persuading people to whatever our point of view, whatever product, whatever plan, whatever we are promoting, and we're not persuading anything, we're failing. And so I like what Abraham Lincoln said. I, I didn't hear it personally, so I did find this quote though, is that he talks about, in persuading a person, he thinks about it one-third about himself. So as I'm promoting my presentation here, I'm thinking one-third of what I'm going to say. But really, much more importantly, two-thirds is what do you think? Am I making an impression on your heart, mind, body, and soul by what I'm telling you? That's more important than rehearsing what I say. I could be thinking about what I'm gonna say the whole time. It doesn't matter if it falls on deaf ears. I know you're thinking about lunch already, aren't you? <laughs> then you're thinking, oh, God, I hope this doesn't go on too long. I am so hungry, okay? I've gotta finally, I gotta break through that stomach growling in order to make the impression. It's more about you, it's not about me. So, paramount persuasion principle numero uno. Number one, everyone is in the sales business. Everybody is. You go, oh, no, no, not my department. Nope, not going to do it. You go, oh, yes, you are. No, 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 I, I do not work in sales. Yes, you do. We all are salespeople in business and in life. And you say, no, no, I, I just cannot sell. Okay, well, what about this? You and your significant other are trying to figure out what to do tonight, Friday night. I want to go to a movie. No, I want to go to dinner. Who wins? The person who has the better sale. Yes, she does. <laughs> Guess who's the better salesperson? <laughs> is we are all in the sales business. And here is something to really focus in on and hone in on in today's information economy. People spend all or most of their time trying to get someone, somewhere, to do something. That's the goal. What are you trying to get your people to do? Somewhere, someone is trying to do something to move you. Paramount persuasion principle number two, people buy for one reason and one reason only. What do you think that is? Any guesses? No? To satisfy needs. That's the only reason. To satisfy some need, that's why people buy. So in order to satisfy needs, I like this, going back to budgeting. Oh, yeah, I can't afford that. Oh, it's not gonna stop me from buying it though. All right, I, know, I know it's not in the budget, and I said, look, I, I'm not in the market for a car. But then you drive by the Maserati dealership and go, well, what's the harm of a test drive? I know it's out of my budget. Then you test drive it and you break it down and you know, you know, this thing would only cost me $500 an hour if I bought it. I can afford that. <laughs> you know, and you start rationalizing about it, right? Even if it's not in the budget. So let's talk about three pounds of raw power. Okay, the human brain. It's all that, it's only 2% of the body weight, but 20% of our energy is used up by the human brain. So why am I focused on the human brain? Well, the reason why is it's broken down into left and right hemispheres. You're probably familiar with this, right? You've heard about left brain versus right brain. Left brain is logical. Right brain is creative. All right, there's recent research that has come out in 2013 where it says, oh, maybe it's not 
so much you're either a left brain or a right brain, but the connection between the two, so they're always doing more research, and the latest research shows that there is more of a melding between the two, but you see the different qualities, analytical, logical, precise, repetitive, you're the detail-oriented left brain person, or are you a right brain, are you a creative? You're into words, not so much numbers, and intuitive and conceptual and feelings. How many people would classify themselves as left brain people? How about right brain? Ooh, righties look like they're dominating. Very good. You need them both. So when you look at left brain logical, that's the results. That's the Chuck Gill budgeting deal. <laughs> Okay, you got a number, money, time, productivity. Let's see the numbers. What do the numbers say? The right brain is the emotional part, the feeling, recognition, achievement, job security, pleasure. Those are the right brainers. Why does this even matter when what we're talking about today in the tennis industry? You got to know your customer. You got to know your customer. Paramount persuasion principle number three is this. And if you don't remember anything other than this, I want you to remember this one. People reject on logic, but they buy on emotion. They reject on logic, they buy on emotion. And you think about it, you say, how many times do you say, nope, I'm not gonna buy it? And then your emotions and your feelings start to go, you know what? Then what do you do? You use the logic to rationalize it, right? But it's the emotion that drives. So it is that emotion leads, but logic reinforces. Emotion leads, but the logic can move the process along. And there's a time and place for both. And Maya Angelou, with her famous quote, people won't remember what you said, people won't remember what you did, they will always remember how they made you feel. So, you're gonna forget 99.9% .9 of the words I say today. And what I did up here, you'll probably forget. But you'll come away with an impression. Gosh, I hope it's good. If it isn't, that's not good. But, if you come away with something that you learned, that you can take and say, you know what, I remember this one thing you said. And I remember coming out of the room and going, that was a good investment of, a, of an hour. And I look at that, I take that seriously. I've spent a lot of time putting this together. But here's the deal, is you're making the time investment. You're never gonna get this hour back. And I wanna make sure that it's the most useful hour that I can possibly make it. And in that, in the world that you're in, in whatever sphere, think about that. When you're in the conversation with people and whatever you're doing, make that impact because you never get that time back. That's what's so critical. People reject on logic, but they will buy on emotion. So in knowing these persuasion principles, it will allow you to create an energy. It'll allow you to generate excitement. It will allow you to ignite enthusiasm in your world, in your business, whatever sphere in which you work. Is you've gotta know that it leads by emotion, you need to touch the heart. Logic, critical. You can't be just plain stupid. You know, oh man, this, this doesn't make any sense at all. But you have to have the feeling, you have to create the energy behind it in order to move it forward. So what exactly is energy? Okay, it's the capacity for vigorous activity, available power, is energy. That's what you want to do. You want to create energy within your core. And how do you do it? The number one reason people buy is to satisfy needs. What's the number one reason people buy in? Okay, so people buy to satisfy needs, but think about you and your team. You're presenting the, the program, the plan, whatever it might be, what gets you buy in? It's the leader that meets the needs of the core. They're buying the leader, okay? Consumers buy to meet needs. The core, your team, the leader meets the needs in presenting the plan. So, 
If you want buy-in from your team, it's got to be a good plan. We've already established it's going to be a great plan. This is going to blow the doors off. You're going to exceed budget, whatever it might be. But you need, with your team as you work with them, to get buy-in from them. Okay? One, you've got to sell the rationale of the plan, and we're going to talk about that just a little bit. But give them the core four from you as their leader. One, it's trust. They need to trust you, that the plan that you're presenting to them, the lesson that you're giving to the group, whatever it might be, that they trust you, that you're going to deliver results. You care about others. You have the compassion. That person is looking to you and saying, do they really care about me, though? I mean, if I want to get the team on board, yeah, but he doesn't give a rip about me. Why should I? It could be a great plan. But I get, you don't even know me. Am I going to buy into that? Not as likely. Stability, the strength of just saying, I know where we're going here. I feel safe here with you as the leader. And hope. You've got the plan. Where are we going? Can you provide the hope? Can you provide the picture out there for the people in order to say, this is what the future looks like. This is where we're going. So let's go there together. So empowering the core, empowering your team, is co-creating with the core. The process of co-creation energizes your team. It gains commitment. It provides direction. The best way to have a good idea is to have lots of ideas. You can't do it alone. Love this quote. It's an old African proverb. Okay? You can go fast if you go alone. I, got, I, I have to fight against this all the time. I prefer to just do things by myself. I just want to get it. If I want to get it done, I know exactly what I need to do. I just get it done. I don't want anybody else to mess it up. The thing is, is we need people to mess it up. Because we can go fast alone, but if we want to go far, we have to do it together. We have to do it together because... That's what's going to move people along. You can do it alone, but you'll go fast, but you won't go far. Does that make sense? You picking up what I'm laying down so far? We doing good? You getting hungry? All right. <laughs> Amazingly, I'm going to go even faster now by keeping the KISS theory, keep it simple, stupid, which a little research, I found out that started in 1960 with the U.S. Navy when they were de uh, devising vessels they go through it, and the engineer was saying, you know what, build all these complicated ships and subs. Let's just keep it simple, stupid, right? And so that's what the theory, which has gotten to be well known, is the KISS theory. So let's cut to the chase. As you get buy-in from your team, as you're co-creating with the core, you ask three fundamental questions. Where are we today? Where do we want to be? And how do we get there? Those are the three fundamental questions that people are asking you as a leader. Answer those three questions. That's what they want to know. What? So bottom line here, I know, like we've been in this meeting for six and a half hours now. What are we doing again? Where are we going? It keeps going back to these questions. If you can answer them quickly and succinctly, you're going to be far because Albert Einstein was right. If you can't explain it, then you don't understand it all. So you need to be able to really be cogent, concise, and precise in painting that picture for your core in order to empower them. And questions are the key. I could spend an hour just talking about the importance of questions. They're so important. Is I just love this section because asking questions is just so critical. One of the major reasons why is because they demonstrate we care. When I ask you, hey, how are you doing? Are you doing all right? But then I go, hey, how are you? I, w I was running. I was doing some trail running. And I'm running past a guy. And of course, I'm going probably 45, 50 miles an hour. And so I fly by and the guy says, uh, hey, how are you? As I'm running past him. I, I almost wanted to turn around and run after him and go, I'm going to answer your question. I'm doing great. How are you? It's so often we say, hey, how are you doing? But we, we don't really want the answer, right? We're just saying, hey, hey, how are you doing? Like, don't tell me. 
So I often, when I'm at a grocery store, hey, how you doing? I go, you know what? God, boy, if I had a date. Let me tell you this. I had a horrible night's sleep. And they start to look at I start going in, well, boy, let me back up. Okay, it's starting like last August. And then they go, oh, oh God, of all people, I ask how they're doing. But really listen to the answer. It's the greatest compliment you can ever give anybody. And the answers help us to modify and to customize. Good questions help clarify the plan. Your ears will never get you in trouble. Okay, one mouth, two ears, use them in that proportion. One mouth, two ears, use it in the proportion. Ask good questions and your ears will never get you in, in trouble. And I love this, intelligence is best measured by the answers, not by the answers we give, but by the questions we ask. So my son, when he was three years old, he would ask 30 questions an hour with gusts up to 60. It was unbelievable. And my youngest daughter said to me, she'd say, Dan, how do you put up with that? He's like following you around all day long asking you these questions. I said, I absolutely love it. One, because I love the interaction. But secondly, it shows a bright, vibrant mind because he's asking so many questions because he's learning. Never forget to ask questions and ask a lot of them because that's how we learn. So be a triple C threat. Constant contact communicator. communicator. When you are listening, you're learning, they will help you identify the leaders, the lifters, the loafers and the leeches. By the way, you don't want those last two. <laughs> this got a little preview there. You don't want the last two because those will suck the three E's out of your life. The lopers and the leeches is not who you want to be as part of your core. And frankly, if you empower them, it's going to go negative. So we don't want them. We want to ask questions because it helps identify Hey, who's on board and who's not? And those, are, you can get it by questions, you know, a lot of times. So, if we get to the end of this and I haven't gone like two and a half hours over and, and by that time you're emaciated and starving, is that I say, okay, I'll take a few questions. If there's no questions, then it's one of two things. One, oh man, I so totally nailed this thing. Or, you're like, God, I can't wait to eat and thank God he's done. Right? It's like, I just don't want to think about this anymore. So questions are a very, very good thing. Who's read Good to Great? Perpetually at the top of the best-selling business books. Highly, highly recommended. It. It's brilliant. It talks about there are times when we can't wait for somebody. Either you're on the bus or you're not. And that's one of the tenets of the book, Good to Great, that Jim Collins writes. So he says, you've got to get the right people on the bus, which is the core. If you don't have the right people on the bus, you're in trouble. So three ways to get your team on the bus. You can order them on the bus. You get your book on the bus right now. Ooh, boy, that's going to get them fired up, right? Or you can drag them on the bus. Listen, you don't take you by the hair and drag you up here. You're on the bus now, right? You're ready to hit. That's probably not going to go well. What we want is we want to get them so fired up that they're beating you to the bus. They want to jump on and say, I am so totally on board with this. I am so fired up and ready to go. And I do have to say, though, if that fails, you can always just run them over with the bus. <laughs> that could create a little bit of an HR issue, but that's, you know, hey, those are your four choices. But number three is what you want. So, moving on to inspiring the influencers. So, you've empowered the core, core's fired up and ready to go. Now you've got your influencers. It's the next ring out. So, what does it mean to excite? Stir up the emotions. People get jacked up. People get jacked up. That's what you want. You want to get them excited so that they start to inspire. I love kids, and I just love excited kids, so I just thought, oh. now they're, they're always excited. Have you ever seen that video of the, the kid in the orange there? You gotta, you gotta check it out because he goes crazy when the cars come by, 
and just starts to freak out. It's, it's great. I love the excitement. So what is an influencer? We want to excite the influencers. It's an individual who has the power to affect the purchasing decisions. Again, where you are, in your club, in your pro shop, in your organization, whatever it might be, who's the influencer? Who are the influencers? Who are the people that you want to get on board that say, if I get Brittany fired up about this, she is going to tell a thousand people and is going to get excited about the program, about the product, about the activity. Think about who are the influencers in your world. And the size of the influence depends on the size of the niche. Forbes magazine identifies micro-influencers as anyone in social media who has a following from 1,000 to 100,000. Now I realize we're in the tennis industry. That is not a micro-influencer. That's like a mega-influencer, okay? What we want is we want to find out who can move the needle. Who are the people that aren't officially employed in your realm that can move the needle, needle forward with your plan, program, strategy? Anyone here familiar with the Golden Circle? Simon Sinek, one of the most popular TED Talks. It's outstanding, highly recommended. And he talks about very quickly here that we start with the what. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll talk about Wilson very quickly, realm where I spent almost 30 years. The what, we make tennis rackets, okay? Here's the racket, play it. Then it's how, okay? Well, we've got special material on that reduces the shock and vibration here, play it. That's nice. Does it really get you fired up? No. But you get to the why. You want to play like Roger Federer? There you go. You'll have the identical backhand. <laughs> and with this racket, you will look just like him. Okay. Again, touching the emotion. Get to the why. Why are you doing what you're doing? And I ask you that question, not just in business, but in life as well. It's what I wrestle with too, and I say, okay, so, so why am I here again? Why did I spend so much time on I-85 I yesterday in traffic? The opportunity to touch a heart. I call it leaving footprints on another person's heart. Hopefully there's something that I can add value in your world that's gonna help you and propel you forward. That fills my heart, though. Did something. What's your mark in the world? What's your mark on your business? What is your contribution to the world? What's your contribution to the world in which you work? So critical getting to why. When your why gets bigger, the how becomes easier. When the why gets bigger? When the why gets bigger, the how gets easier. If you know why you're doing what you're doing, the how is a little bit easier. I know why I'm doing it. The how may be really messy. It may not be really clean. Frankly, I don't care about the how that much because the why is so huge. So I don't care how I get here to talk to all of you. It's the why am I here to talk to all of you. If that's big enough, then it doesn't matter if I sit in traffic at I-85. If my why is big enough, if this is important to me, I'm going to be here one way or another. And it's going to be the same way in everything that you do. When your why becomes bigger, your how becomes easier. Touch the emotions so they want to get into motion. And you want to help visualize where they want to go. Now is where you need to start trying to paint a picture. Uh, Chuck, you had touched on that a little bit. You say, hey, Put a, put a picture, try to, try to help them visualize. I know spreadsheets are so exciting with all those cute little boxes and you can color code them. Usually not the best visual to give. So how can you have some great visuals? Design stick to your ribs moments. This, this is a phrase that I developed actually walking out of Forrest Gump. So I watched Forrest Gump and it was a couple years ago in the theater. 
And I walked out, and I'll tell you, I had a golf ball in my throat. And I walked out, and I remember I said to my wife, I said, why can't they make all movies that powerful? That just touched me in a, in a certain way, and I go, that was awesome. It stuck, and I said, it stuck to my ribs. I still think about it now. There's certain things, certain experiences that you've had that stick to your ribs, that you just remember, and they stick to your ribs. In fact, I just had one very recently, very quick story, is I was at FedEx office two days ago. What's today, Friday? So it's three days ago, on Tuesday. And I'm waiting for a printing job to get done. And this uh, young lady walks up to me, and she, she shows me her phone, and she says, which do you think would make a be better banner? This picture of me and my dad, or this picture where it's just him alone getting out of a truck? And I said, what's it for? We ended up having almost a 20 minute conversation because her, her dad had just passed away. And she, it was actually three years previous. She says, people say it gets easier. It doesn't. I said, well, I lost my mom, May 31st, 2017. And I said, I was there when she passed away. It was a, obviously a stick to your ribs type moment. This gal, Kimberly, and I talked for about 15 minutes. I gave her my number and I said, I know you're starting a business. Anything I can do to help you, I, I'd be happy to do that. And she sent me a text and she said, thank you so much for the words of wisdom. It helped me so much. And we're going to stay in touch because I want to see how our business does. That's a stick to your ribs moment. I said, I am so tired of being in FedEx office. I've been here all flipping day. But that 15 minute conversation stuck to my ribs. That's what you want. You want to stick to your ribs. Is it dying? Oh, I don't need it? Yes, I'm no, bringing it back. Thank you, I need it. Okay. <laughs> 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 so it's turning the lights, turn it red. What does that mean? This is the this, this is not what we call a stick to your ribs moment. Uh, this, hopefully you'll forget this one. I thought it was not. I thought, actually, I thought it was me. I got, I got a leaky valve in my heart. I said, my gosh, it's near the microphone, or I'm, I'm, this is the big one. So let's go to stick to your ribs. <laughs> Each interaction that you have is an opportunity to create an experience. You go, oh, it's no big deal. I mean, this is a guy in the locker room who takes out the trash. Oh, it can be a real big deal. Every opportunity you can create an experience. And you think about it in terms of sales, promotion, marketing, commercial, budgeting, personal relationships, in and out of business. You have these opportunities every time to have a stick to your ribs moment. A picture is worth a thousand words. They do, even more so now. Because we live in such a visual world, image is everything, as Andre Agassi used to say with Canon cameras, right? Image is everything. It's not, but it's something, and it's huge. So a few images that are powerful. This was after a 23 hour heart transplant surgery. And you see the other uh, nurse practitioner laying in the corner from exhaustion. You look at that, that's just a powerful picture. I love this one. The picture on the left is father and son, 1949. The picture on the right, same two people, 2009 in the same thing. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Really powerful. There's no words there. Incredible visual. There was a, a huge bushfire in Australia in 2009, and here's a firefighter giving water to a koala bear. It evokes emotion. It brings, brings thoughts and feelings. <laughs> like that cute one. We can do that. So many cute baby pictures that you can get. Okay? Think about, in your world, how can you use visuals to get your point across? 
How can you use visuals to persuade? Think about in your club. You can't take too many pictures. You can't take too many videos. And where could you post them? Where your members then come in and look at all these pictures. Maybe you have a big picture wall or you have a banner of powerful pictures. Oh my God, you got that shot? You know where I hit that between the leg shot? I know it was like on the sixth bounce and you know, but anything, there's so much potential when you use visuals. And that's all part of communication, is using the visuals. NSC, never stop communicating. Never stop communicating your vision, your mission, your plan, your goals, your strategy. And then it becomes inculcated into the minds of not only your core, but also your influencers. Does that make sense? Over and over and over again, keep articulating it in new and creative ways. Connecting is so crucial. If you aspire to inspire, you need to be transparent and authentic and approachable and helpful, and you want to be human. So in terms of connection, what athlete would you say does that best currently? You could choose any athlete, any sport. Who connects best? Tom Brady. Tom Brady? Yeah. Who else? Yeah. Roger. Okay. LeBron, LeBron James. LeBron James, Jordan. I'll pick this guy, Fed. Yeah. I had the privilege of spending the day with him a couple years ago in Sitges, Spain. And we did a 20, 25 minute stage interview. And I got to watch him up close and how he treated everybody. It was remarkable, absolutely remarkable, his ability to connect. And here was what's encouraging to me. It wasn't fake, it wasn't manufactured. There wasn't one time he looked at his watch and go, okay, well I put in my three hours, all right, I'm, I'm out of here which so many athletes and celebrities do. He was he's like, what more can I do? So a couple of things very quickly from, uh, from that day is after we got done with the stage interview, we had 50 of our largest dealers from around the world there. We had them line up and we did what was called a step and repeat. So they come up, they, they get up in front, we have an official photographer, they take a picture with Roger and then exit to the right. So Roger and I are, are standing back and then he moves forward and, and I watch how he's interacting with the people. So some of them brought their phones. So we do a step and repeat and, and they'll say, hey Roger, could I do like a selfie quickly? Yeah, no problem. And so this couple comes up and the lady does a selfie and then they get ready and he says, wait, wait a minute. You had your eyes closed. Let's do another one. And I thought, that's unbelievable. Here's a guy, how many people want to take pictures with Roger Fair? And he has the sensitivity to know that for this lady, this is like the moment. You're with the goat. And you get to take a picture. She doesn't want her eyes closed. And he had the sensitivity to say, let's retake it. But that's just remarkable. And he can connect with people on an incredible level. One other quick Roger story is our Munich office had his new pro staff rackets delivered. So they're telling me this story. They said, we've got to take the rackets up to his chalet in Switzerland. So they call in the intern. The intern comes in and says, oh, I'm going to the mailbox again today or whatever. We got a job for you. Yeah, what is it? You need to go to Roger Federer's house and deliver a dozen rackets to him. <laughs> me? Like me? Yeah, you. You got to go up there. Go. So he drives up sweating like crazy, knocks on the door, and Merica answers the door, his wife, says, well, Roger is out with the kids uh, right now, but he'll be back in a couple hours, you can come in. He goes, no, 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 I'll just, I'll just wait in the car. Sat in the driveway for an hour and a half, two hours. Then Roger pulls up and gets out, and, and then he knocks, Roger, I've got your rackets. Oh, thank you. And Roger says, hey, um, you wanna go take a walk? Me? Yeah, you. He says, 
Uh, he says, I'm kind of in the mood for ice cream. Can I go take a walk? Yeah. Take a, so Roger and the intern go take a walk. They're taking a walk and said, well, let's get some ice cream. So they get some ice cream. Says, you want to just sit and kind of hang out on the bench for a little bit? Me? <laughs> yeah, you. And he said, you know, we can take a picture here if you want. They spend 45 minutes, maybe an hour together with the intern. You get the measure of a man or a woman by how they treat someone who can do absolutely nothing for them. How they treat the, quote, lowest of the low. Someone who's low on the status rung. Incredibly impressive. Incre and that is the reason why, arguably, he's the most beloved athlete. Sure, everyone has their days or their moments. He has very, very few. And in fact, I just saw a video, I don't know if you saw it on the internet, just saw a video of he was not allowed into the player's locker room at the Australian Open. Did anybody see that? And his reaction, he said, you know who I am? You know I can go back because I'm the GOAT? <laughs> hey, he, didn't do, he didn't do that. He just said, oh, wait, wait you know, I need to get somebody to kind of help me get in the player's locker room. He didn't throw, and I've heard the stories about him at, at restaurants where he'll go out to a restaurant and they'll say, you know, it's going to be a two-hour wait. Well, I think he could play the, the card and say, you know, have to go. No, 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 we'll go someplace else. That's fine. It just, it, it's really remarkable. So think about that. Transparent, authentic, approachable, helpful, and human. So now, we'll transition into moving the masses. How am I doing on time? I mean, I got my watch messed up here. Okay, we are, okay. We doing good? All right. Here we go. Enthusiasm. Absorbing. Controlling possession of the mind. Lively interest. That's enthusiasm. Gosh, I hope you just get just a touch of enthusiasm for what we're going over right now. Just a little. I'll be good with that. That's what you want. Build that enthusiasm. So Josh Weltman, who is the co-producer of Mad Men, came up with this, uh, this quote. And it, it used to be known as advertising, or it used to be known as marketing. And you can read the quote there. In our modern, service-based, social media-centric information economy, the job is called life. It's so complicated now, isn't it? Starting a business, where do you start? Do you start with a, a podcast, a website, a blog, Instagram, Facebook? What, what do I do? Okay. It's everybody's job in order to market. And a major mistake is having the greatest program, the greatest plan ever, and then just throwing it over the wall. Say, no, someone will grab it. Maybe someone's mowing the lawn on the other side and they'll grab it. No, you need to get out and promote it. You need to advertise it. You need to sell it. Ted Turner, when I get asked what's the secret to success, I just say, early to bed, early to rise, work like hell and advertise. Not a bad strategy, it's work for old tech. The essence of marketing is this. Think, do, measure, revise. Repeat, put a fifth one in there. Think, do, measure, revise. As you formulate your strategy of how to reach your people, think about it, go do it, then measure it, how did we do, now let's revise it, and go back again and do it better. Not the best mission statement of just avoiding bankruptcy. Not exactly something you can hang on to and get you all fired up. Today's consumers are asking four fundamental questions. They want to know, what is this thing? So you've got the plan, you have the strategy, you've put it together, you've co-created with your core. What is it? Why do I need it? So you've come up, you've developed a product, you've developed a program, an activity. Why do I need it? What makes it different? I have a thousand different choices. Why this? Why do you want me to invest my time to this? And who else thinks it's good? Social media. Those are the four questions that consumers are asking, and those are the questions that you're going to need to ask yourself and then subsequently answer 
if you want to reach your people. So in answering these questions, we need to do so intriguingly, economically, truthfully, and memorably. Can you go back to the other one for a second? Absolutely. That one? Yeah. Those are the four questions that you have to answer. And you need to do it in this way. That's how you move the masses. What's the phrase that I love so much? When I get out of a theater or an experience, I want it to stick to your ribs. I want it to stick to your ribs. When you go see a movie, the last thing you want is to walk out of the theater the same way you were when you walked in, right? Well, how was the movie? Meh. I, I've already forgot. What was the name of that thing again? Well, I just wasted two and a half hours. I knew I should have gone to Rotten Tomatoes and saw it had an 18% on the tomato meter. <laughs> what was I thinking? You don't want to waste that time. You want it to stick to your ribs. So what I thought about, and I hope I can get this video to play very quickly. I thought about Old Spice, the deodorant. So the question is, what is it? Old Spice is a deodorant. Why do I need it now? Oh yeah, that's why I need it now. I know why I need it. What makes it different than the other things? Old Spice smells differently than other deodorants. And who else thinks it's good? So that's where social media comes in. And so let's see if we can get this. Hello ladies, look at your man. Now back to me, now back at your man. Now back to me. Sadly, he isn't me. But if he stopped using Lady Scented Body Wash and switched to Old Spice, he could smell like he's me. Look down. Back up. Where are you? You're on a boat with the man your man could smell like. What's in your hand? Back at me. I have it. It's an oyster with two tickets to that thing you love. Look again. The tickets are now diamond. Anything is possible when your man smells like Old Spice and not a lady. I'm on a horse. Back to me. There's your man. He stinks. Back to me. I'm totally chiseled. And I'm like, your man could smell like me. <laughs> so what they're doing is they're endeavoring to answer those questions. And in doing so, is it credible? Is it meaningful? Is it memorable? I keep going back to that again. Again, please think about on the memory side, how you can get it to stick to your ribs. As I speak, with music behind me. <laughs> that means I must be getting to an even deeper point. Hey, hi, are you all enjoying yourself? Is it credible? I know, isn't it? All right, now I'll take up a collection. <laughs> I'll have the altar call. Credible, meaningful, memorable. Create memories in the world where you are at. How can you do it? We've talked about some of the ways in order to do that. Some final thoughts as we wrap up. Ask questions, a lot of really good questions. Don't just be interested. Be fascinated. Like, how does it really work? What really makes that person tick? Is this plan really the right one? Is it really a good one? Two huge benefits of being a good questioner. You learn valuable information, and you earn Respect, admiration, because you show you care when you actually listen. You learn and you earn by asking questions. Learning all the time, the tombstone will be my diploma. Like attracts like. Be the person that you want people working for you. Like attracts like. If you're a pessimist, guess who you're going to attract? God, I've got a team of just the most pessimistic people. Man, are they a drag. Well, ask yourself, how do you attract them in the first place? <laughs> Mediocrity attracts the mediocre. How do you feel about your team? Eh, you're all right, I guess. Well, maybe you as a leader, eh, you're all right, I guess. Excellent attracts the excellent. Be the best version you can possibly be. And guess what? You'll be attracting the people that you want in your life.
Life will change for the better when you change for the better. The world you see is a reflection of what goes on in your mind. And I have a feeling that right now you're seeing food in your mind. We're almost there. If you're not green and growing, you're ripe and rotting. This becomes a challenge for you pups out there. The older we get, the more that this is a challenge. Say, I do not want to be ripe and rotty. <laughs> so I need to continue to improve, continue to learn. Never stop growing. If you're not growing, you're dying. And connect with people on the heart level. For they do what? Reject on logic, but they buy on emotion. Darn it, that's the one typo I had. Ah, this spelled buy. So, reject on logic, they buy on emotion. You sold me this versus I bought that. Isn't that true? You get stuck with a skunk of a product. And you just, you, you bought a lemon of a car. Go, you know what? That guy sold that to me. I had a feeling, I knew it, and he just screwed me because I bought that thing. But if you buy something you really like, what do you say? Oh, I did that. So you get the credit for making a good purchase, but if you buy something that's a bad purchase, you know, it's his fault. That's the emotion logic dichotomy. Nobody likes to be sold, but everyone likes to buy. And so think about this. Think about how you can say thank you, how you can show your appreciation in a powerful way to the people around you by having an attitude of gratitude. Let me see if I can get this to play in a way that was remarkably powerful. Hello there. Hi. Hi. <laughs> I'm here to thank you. You're welcome. Hi, Christine. Bonjour, Karine. Bonjour. Hi, Michael. Hi. I'm ATM. You know what ATM stands for? Automated teller machine. That is correct, normally, but today you're wrong. I'm an automated thanking machine. Hey, oh, look at that, buddy. <laughs> That's for you. That's on TV Canada Trust. Thank you. Ooh, selfie. Get my good side. There's a slot that's opening oh, up. Oh my goodness. Never in all my life had such a beautiful surprise. Yeah, you've been uh, helping your daughter out, is that correct? Yes. We've got something for you, Christine. We, there's something that's about to come out there. Those are two piggy banks. Those are for your kids. Well, we've got a little something for you because you're a famous customer. We know you love the Jays so much. Look on the other side of me. There's another slot. It's going to open, <laughs> wow. open up. On the left side there, yeah. It's going to open up. That's awesome. She's my only daughter. She has cancer and she had uh, an operation on Tuesday. We wanted to thank you in a very specialized way. There's actually a card coming out for you right there. And if you look inside each piggy bank, there's a check for $1,000 to start an RESP for each of your kids. No way! Yes! Yeah, right. <laughs> that outfit. <laughs> well, the thanking's not done, Christy. What? Here's the thing. If you tell your kids, hey, here's an RESP, they'll be all, nah. But if you tell them you're taking them to a place like Disney... No! Yes, you're taking your kids to a magical place in California, Christine. <laughs> I've never been able to take my kids anywhere. <laughs> it's wonderful that you've been with us for so long that we got uh, we got somebody who might want to talk to you for a second about that. <laughs> oh my God! During this time, we have come to know how giving, loving, and supportive you are, especially to your daughter in Trinidad. She's a lucky woman to be able to call you mom. So I just threw you a ball, but Sunday you'll be throwing me a ball. Oh my God. You'll be throwing out the first pitch. <laughs> that is awesome. That is awesome. I got goosebumps right now. Actually, Dorothy, could you, 
Could you lean in for a second? Because I have a secret to tell you. Just lean in very close. So we want you to thank her yourself. So we've got some something coming out of the slot right now. Something right there for you. And those are tickets. Those are tickets to Trinidad. Are you serious? I am serious. You're going to go see your daughter in Trinidad. That's very. Yeah. No. Thank you, Dorothy. How can you surprise and delight the people in your world? That's what it's about. How do you have an attitude of gratitude that will propel your business forward, propel your life forward? How can you have that attitude of gratitude work to surprise and delight the people around you? And so I thank you. Thank you for the surprise and delight of uh, having me today. I've enjoyed it. Thank you.